What's up YouTube? My name's Stefan. Welcome to the channel. Today's video we're going to be talking about five things I wish I knew when I was getting started on my journey as a programmer. So just a little bit of background of myself before we get started. I'll keep this short. My name is Stefan. I'm 30 years old. I'm a self-taught programmer and I currently work at Facebook or Meta. And I wanted to just give you guys some advice that I wish I had when I was getting started on my coding journey and along the way as well. I think this would have really helped me out with um, you know balancing out my life, making progress as a developer during that time. All right guys, so the first thing I wish I knew was to find a structured learning environment, right? To find some sort of curriculum to guide me on my learning path. If you guys think about it, everything you've learned up to this point in your life, or most of it, has been through a curriculum style structure. Like when you're in school, you have a curriculum of things that you learn, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's the most efficient way to learn something you sort of build the foundations of a concept and then you use those foundations as stepping stones or blocks to build your knowledge when you start to learn more complicated things. Imagine if you tried learning math and the first thing you tried to learn was calculus. Imagine you never even learned addition, right? So the problem is when you're teaching yourself how to code, you don't know where to start and you don't know where to go after you've started. You have no idea what you don't know. You're just trying to take in this massive amount of information and there's no real structure to it. So finding that structured learning environment through something like a course or a boot camp or college classes, whatever it may be, is huge when you are starting out on your coding journey because if you don't have that, you're gonna waste a lot of time and you're also not gonna learn as fast and you're gonna have no idea if you're learning the right things or how to gauge your performance, right? A, a huge way uh, of gauging your performance or your progress when you're learning something is like, okay, I learned the first thing. Now let me try to learn the second thing. Okay, I can do the second thing. That means I mastered the first thing. Let me go on to the, you know part C or part or part three, whatever it is, right? So um, having that structured learning environment is going to accelerate your learning and make your uh, coding journey just a lot easier in general. Um, so I recommend you know going online, trying to find some courses. Udemy is a great platform. Um, there's a lot of stuff on Coursera and stuff like that, and you can get courses pretty cheap these days. So that's a great way to start, guys. That's the first thing I would do. The second thing I wish I had or knew to have more of was patience. And this applies not just to when I was starting out, but even up until now at my current level as a software engineer at Facebook. So without that patience, let me tell you guys what happens. It leads to a lot of unnecessary frustration. It leads to a lot of self-doubt. You start beating yourself up, wondering if coding is even right for you. You wanna give up. And it just brings all this negativity into the journey. So having patience and understanding that what you're trying to do is very difficult, right? Coding is an extremely difficult not to, thing, not just to learn, but to get good at as well. And having patience along that journey is going to help you avoid a lot of that unnecessary frustration and a lot of that unnecessary self-doubt. And it's just gonna make everything more enjoyable for you all together, right? And patience sort of ties into another thing, which is balance. If you don't have patience and you just want to learn everything, right, and you just want to keep cranking things out and you, you start to sort of get obsessed with what you're doing. And when you become obsessed in one area of your life, it takes away from other things that you do in your life. So something that happened to me was because of my lack of patience is that I would burn myself out, right? So I would just code all day, all night, and that would affect other areas in my life negatively. Like it would it affected me going to the gym and my fitness, it affected my diet, it affected my personal relationships in my life where sometimes you know I wouldn't go hang out with my girlfriend or I wouldn't go hang out with my friends because I was just so buried in learning how to code. Whereas like if you just have that little bit of patience and say hey man maybe I could just pick this up tomorrow, clear my mind out a little bit, that's going to be a much more enjoyable learning experience for you. Um, as opposed to just going full send all the time, no patience, I wanna learn this right now, why can't I get this, let's keep going until I do, right? That's not the way to do it, guys. Patience and balance are two key components to you 
accelerating the learning process and your journey and enjoying it as well. Number three, don't be intimidated by something when you don't understand it. So a big problem I had guys was if I looked at a certain piece of code or a certain concept and I didn't understand it and it looked difficult, I would get so intimidated by it that I would just like not even try to understand what was going on. And that's a problem, right? Because it might slow down your learning process and it builds a really bad habit. Okay, anytime I don't immediately understand something when I'm looking at it, I'm just not even gonna try to, right? And that can happen a lot. And that can happen all the way from the beginner levels to the advanced levels of being a programmer. So it might be something as simple as like functions, right? And all the things that come together with that, or it might be a little bit more complex, like stuff with object-oriented programming. And the reality of it always was that when I took the time to sit down and just break it apart piece by piece and really try to learn it and not be intimidated by it, I always figured it out. It might take a little bit of time, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of critical thinking, but I was always able to figure that thing out. And I, I would look back and go, man, I really should have just taken the time to do that six months ago, right? Because now I would be you know, somewhat of an expert on it or I'd be much more comfortable with this concept or architecture pattern or whatever it may be. And it would have just served me better if I had taken the time back then and not been so intimidated by what I was looking at. So yeah, that's thing number three. Anytime you start to get intimidated by something, try not to be, try to just sit down, break it up into components or break it up into smaller pieces, learn things step by step and see if you can understand it. And if you don't, this comes back to patience. Have a little bit of patience with yourself. Maybe take a break, take a walk, take a day off from it come back to it and see it with, with a fresh mind and see if it's a little easier for you to pick up then. So that's thing number three, guys. Don't be intimidated. Number four, make sure you guys stay consistent. So anytime you're trying to get good at something, guys, or accomplish a goal, consistency is one of the most important factors in accomplishing that goal. For example, if you want to lose weight, you need to diet but if you don't diet consistently, you won't lose any weight. Let's say you go really hard on your diet for two weeks, you're perfect, and then you get tired of it, right? And then for a whole week, you just say, fuck it, I'm gonna eat whatever I want now. You're gonna ruin all your progress. Let's say you wanna get stronger in the gym, so you start going to the gym, but once again, you're not consistent and you burn yourself out, or you go one week, you don't go the next week, you go another week, you don't go the next week, you're never gonna get stronger. So what's the most important thing here? It's consistency. It's the same exact thing with code. If you don't code consistently, it's gonna take you longer than necessary to get good at. So make sure you guys develop a schedule for yourself. Say you wanna code for three days a week for an hour a day. That's pretty good, right? It's something that you could stick to, that you can find the time to do, no matter how busy your schedule is, you can find an hour in your day to, 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 to devote it to something like coding, right? So do that for three days a week, do that for a month, okay? And then if you have more time, up it to four days a week, maybe five days a week, maybe you start doing it for two hours a day. But the most important thing is to develop consistency. And on that same note, guys, it's important not to burn yourself out when you're doing this, right? So when I was learning how to do this because I lacked patience, so this ties back into the patience point, is that I would become obsessive and I would just code all day, all night. And like I mentioned before, it would negatively affect other areas in my life. It would lead to burnout and then it would lead to me uh, needing to take an extended break from the coding because I would just get so tired of it, right? So imagine you do it all day, all night, six for three to six months, right? Eventually your brain's gonna crap out and you're just gonna say, man, I don't wanna do this anymore. And then I would take a break for like one to two, sometimes three months, right? And it would have been better for me to just stay consistent with it and do it less. Number five, make sure you guys go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button for me down below. If you wanna see more content like this and help me grow this channel, it's much appreciated, guys. But for real now, number five is you guys wanna make sure that you're setting goals for yourself on this journey. So you probably already have some sort of long-term goal in mind, right? Maybe you wanna build an app, maybe you wanna build a website, maybe you wanna get a job. And I had something similar when I started. I wanted to get a job making over 100K a year as an iOS app developer. And the problem with only having that one long-term goal is that it's hard for you to understand where you're at in terms of accomplishing that goal. 
or how, where you're at in terms of your progress in moving towards that ultimate goal, right? So how do you solve that problem? Well, what you need to do, something I wish I did, was break that goal up, that long-term goal into smaller parts. So you need to set a set of short-term and mid-term goals for yourself that will ultimately help you get to that long-term goal, right? And that's gonna accomplish a couple things for you. One, it will help you realize where you're at along your journey and how much you've progressed or how far you've come. It's also gonna help you get a better understanding of how far away or how close that long-term goal may or may not be. And then the last thing is it's really gonna give you a sense of accomplishment as you cross goals off that list, guys. So that's gonna help build your confidence as a programmer and really help make the process of accomplishing that long-term goal more efficient. So like, let's go do a quick breakdown of what that might look like. You might set some short-term goals for you that is like on a daily or weekly basis. Like on this day, I wanna accomplish this thing. By the end of this week, I wanna have this concept learned or whatever it may be. And then your midterm stuff should be like monthly goals, right? So like maybe every three to six months, you wanna evaluate where you are, or maybe you wanna have a certain like type of thing built or be at a certain level by the time you're at six months in or nine months in or whatever it may be. And then, as you sort of develop those goals, it's ultimately gonna help you get that long-term, get to that long-term goal of getting the job, right? And then maybe after you get the job, you have another long-term goal of getting to a senior level within five years or becoming a chief technology officer within 10 years, whatever it may be. So the more goals you have, the better, right? Just break them up into smaller parts so that it helps you understand where you're at in terms of accomplishing those ultimate overarching long-term goals. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Those are five things I wish I knew on my coding journey, and I think those things will really help you guys out on your journey to accomplishing whatever your goals might be. So I appreciate you watching the video. Once again, like and subscribe to the content below if you wanna see more stuff like this and help me grow this channel. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace out.